Hello, and welcome to KDAB News, the monthly update for professionals working with Qt, C++, and 3D technologies. I'm Robert Brock, and in this edition we have Qt DevCon from the 13th to the 15th of June in Berlin, the world's first eco-certified software, an interview with Josef de Baugeis from KDE, tip of the month, and our announcements. Before we get to our main feature, just a short heads up for our Qt Developer Conference coming up in June in Berlin. But I'll let Jesper tell you a bit more about it. Hi, I'm Jesper Peterson from KDAP. In today's... Um, um, now I'm here to remind you that on June 13th to 15th, that's going to be a training day and two days of conference in Berlin in real life. The training day has lots of interesting trainings. There's going to be introduction to QML. There's going to be advanced QML. There's going to be C++. There's going to be profiling and a few more that I forgot right now. And then we have two days packed with very hardcore developer content. I'll be there, and I hope to see you too. Energy efficiency of software applications hasn't really been an issue in the past, apart from code that needed to be energy efficient due to its purpose like running on a battery-driven device for sensors, or even a mobile phone. Given that computers are consuming ever larger parts of the total energy produced, and given the urgent need to reduce energy consumption, not only since energy prices have soared up in the last couple of months, but also because it's worth having a closer look at this in general, one of the most established German eco-labels, Blue Angel, or Blaue Engel, has created the world's first certification for eco-friendly software. And Ocular, a universal document viewer developed by KDE, is the world's first software to receive the Blue Angel eco-label for being resource and energy efficient. I have the pleasure to talk to Josef de Valgais from KDE to learn more about the whole thing. Hello, Josef. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. Our first question, people writing and using software might wonder, how relevant is software for energy efficiency after all? So I would say there are three ways to consider the relationship between energy consumption and software engineering. One is energy efficiency, two is energy conservation, and three is energy sources. So the first one, energy efficiency, um, by this I'm referring to uh, when software is performing the same task, but using less energy. And um, an example of this uh, can be found in a study that was published by the Umwelt Bundesamt, or the German Environment Agency, in which they compared applications performing the same functions and then looked at the energy consumption of them. Um, they tested two text editors doing the exact same thing. One text editor had a fourth of the energy consumption compared to the other. As an individual, this may not make a big difference, but when you think of it at a global scale with millions, potentially billions of users, um, this is a non-trivial savings. So that's the first one. The second one, energy conservation. By this, I mean reducing or eliminating unnecessary functions in order to save energy. And this also can be software induced. So an example would be when functioning hardware is discarded as e-waste, um, because of software bloat or uh, un uh, discontinued um, um, uh, support. For the third group, energy sources, um, software can be used to maximize the use of renewable energy sources to reduce CO2 emissions. Um, there are certain times of day when there's more energy being produced by renewable sources than other times of day we can choose to maximize the use of renewable energy sources, um, which means then we're reducing um, CO2 emissions. Um, an example of, of a task, of a delayable task might be software updates. So those are three ways that I would say um, there's a, a, a direct relationship between uh, uh, energy consumption, energy efficiency, energy conservation, and software energy, uh, software engineering. Right, so three good ways to help along with that. So next, Ocular is the world's first eco-certified software product. What are the most significant requirements of the certification? 
So I'm going to answer this in a kind of a roundabout way, um, a sort of process of elimination. Um, so there are three uh, main categories to the Blue Angel Award criteria. Um, the first is potential operating hardware uh, life. The second is user autonomy. And the third is resource and energy efficiency. Um, for potential operating hardware life, uh, for most GNU Linux operating systems, uh, this is trivial to fulfill. Um, so most distros and applications can run on uh, hardware that's from 2017, um, which is the five-year limit um, as of today uh, to be awarded the Blue Angel. Um, personally, I would consider making those requirements much more stringent, um, uh, making them uh, uh, backwards compatible for, for a much longer time. Um, of course, there is the consideration of uh, at which point is using less efficient hardware um, no longer uh, give you the benefits of supporting it um, as opposed to getting more efficient newer hardware. Um, the second category would be user autonomy. Um, and user autonomy is at the heart of free software. And again, uh, free and open source software really has an advantage here um, for the award criteria. For um, user autonomy criteria, this refers to users being able to decide um, how the software runs, um, what's installed, what's not installed, um, options about the data formats they can use, um, the freedom to opt out of advertising um, and other energy consuming processes that are not uh, fundamental to the primary function of the software. Um, and I'm glad that the German Environmental Agency recognizes how critical user autonomy is uh, to allowing users to decide uh, the energy demands of their software. Um, but I think for long-term FOSS users, this is really not exciting. And in many cases, we take these criteria for granted as a given. Um, and then, so that leaves the, the final category, the resource and energy efficiency. And I think this is the most interesting one. Um, and it also energy, uh, the requirements fit very well with the transparency that's already inherent to free and open source software. So the, the main idea here is that uh, developers uh, need to be fully transparent about the energy demands um, from their software. And this includes um, things like energy consumption, CPU usage, network traffic, and whatnot. The benefit of having this transparency for uh, users in particular means that the more products that are certified with the Blue Angel, the more users can make informed decisions about the software um, that they want to use. And when you think back to the example about the two text editors, if you have two text editors that are doing the same thing, but one is uh, consuming four times the energy, you might choose the more efficient one. Um, and that's possible when you have the information from the transparency requirements of the Blue Angel um, Award criteria. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, a bit like when we go out and buy white goods, they all have those energy efficiency stickers on them. And finally, our viewers might wonder what they can do to assess their application regarding energy efficiency. Would you have any tips or maybe quick wins for them? So I can think of only a few quick wins, but one just came up yesterday and it's worth sharing uh, with your listeners. Um, so KDE's e-learning software, GCompre, the software developers um, converted all of their JPEG and uh, PNG images into uh, the WebP format um, in order to both reduce the size of many in images or get a higher quality uh, um, image at the same size. And by doing this, they reduced um, their packages and external image data set um, by about a third. So it went from uh, 66 megabytes to 40 uh, megabytes. And um, this means that the downloads are going to be smaller so that the uh, um, data, uh, the energy consumed when uh, transmitting the data is going to be much less, um, especially when you consider that over the, um, uh, you know, hopefully millions of, and billions of users. Um, and this um, images, the reduced size might make them more responsive um, in the software itself. Um, and so these types of data saving decisions um, can help uh, start to, to make your software more energy efficient. Otherwise, in terms of um, um, more long-term goals of energy efficiency, I would say the first step um, is measuring the software. And for this purpose, um, with KDE Eco, 
Um, together uh, with KDAP Berlin, we are organizing a community lab. Um, the idea is to make a lab uh, accessible to developers um, with professional power meters so that they can get the data um, to both uh, know how much their software consumes, um, hopefully drive down the energy consumption over time, as well as to uh, apply for um, an eco-label like the Blue Angel. Um, the long-term vision for this lab is to make it remotely accessible so that developers can upload their software as well as their standard usage scenario, a script that emulates user behavior, um, and the rest is automated and they can download the report. Um, if there are any listeners who would like to help us with that, we need developers and community members to, um, to make that a reality. Um, other steps to measure uh, software, so a um, KDE community member um, Volker Kauza um, has hacked an uh, inexpensive power plug to work as a power meter. Um, this is, um, it costs about 10 euro, and you can easily set up a, um, a home lab uh, to start measuring software. Um, if you're interested in more um, uh, professional options for power meters, um, be in touch. Uh, we may have resources that we can help you with. Um, so yeah, measuring energy consumption would be the first step that I would uh, emphasize. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. N. Milman Jason is an MIT licensed library to support Jason in C++. It started as a small side project and is now used even by large corporations and received around 25,000 stars on GitHub. The library helps you with intuitive syntax, trivial integration, and profound testing. It is easy to integrate, and JSON objects are treated as first-class citizens with a very intuitive API. Our developers love it and use it in projects wherever it comes in handy. And by the way, if you want to meet the author in person and learn more about it, you can attend QDevCon, where he is giving a talk. If you are looking at serializing or deserializing complex data, you might have looked at available extensions. Most of them do the job, but don't work out of the box, or aren't easy to use. Our colleague, Nicolas Arnaud Como, has written up his ideas on how you can serialize and deserialize almost anything by extending the library just a bit. Read more about it in the blog linked below. Embedded World 2022 is looming. From the 21st to the 23rd of June, the embedded industry will meet in Nuremberg. You can visit KDAB at the Qt booth in Hall 4 to learn about the new Rust bindings for Qt and the Vulkan-based version of Quasar 3D, just among other embedded software demos. Quasar 3D provides 3D integration for embedded and desktop. Get your free ticket with the code mentioned in the description below. CPP Now will happen from the 1st to the 6th of May in Aspen, Colorado. Check out the rich agenda online and note that the conference will be on site only. And last but not least, we here at KDAB TV wanted to thank you for 1 million views. <laughs> You're all amazing. We're really glad to receive so much positive feedback from you on our videos, and we hope they help you with all your coding. Stay tuned and feel free to recommend our channel to your colleagues or friends or family. <laughs> Here's looking forward to another million views. So thank you, stay safe, and feel free to share, of course, any more feedback or questions below the video. See you next time.